And if you followed my steps, shadowing this whole figure should have been pretty easy. How's it going? It's your boy ZH Comic Art, and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to add shadows to a figure. I will do a quick demo and then I'll show you guys how to shadow this figure from the basic lines all the way till this. It is gonna be awesome. So make sure you keep watching, and I have a huge announcement at the end. I'm so excited. You guys are gonna be super excited too, so make sure you watch to the end to find out what it is. If you guys are new here, welcome to the family. So glad you guys are joining us on the daily grind. Let me know down in the comments if you are new. I would love to introduce you to the ZHC fan person. Anyways, with that being said, let's go ahead and get this video started. I'm gonna start out by showing you how to shadow basic shapes. Here's a sphere. There are two shadows, core shadows and cast shadows. These are the two main shadows you need to know in order to light your figures. Over here, I'm gonna draw a few spheres and show you how to light them. So there are different types of light sources. There's ones coming from behind, ones coming from in front. And as you can see, they all cross a certain like halfway mark so the shadow kind of curves around and for the cylinder and rectangles or rectangular prisms it's a little bit more simple just whatever turns away from the light will be shadowed in so I'm giving you guys a few examples here I'm shadowing different things you guys can feel free to slow down the video to check out how each shape is shaded in but we will break down each part of the figure into these shapes so I can show you guys how to shade them in and here I'm showing you cast shadows, so if it's on a sphere, it'll curve over and then straighten out once it reaches a flat surface. And here is another example where it's over a cube. And since they're both flat surfaces, both shadows, both cast shadows will be flat. So if it goes over a sphere, it's going to be curved. And now I'm showing you guys what the torso kind of looks like. So it's going to be a sphere and a rectangular prism. And that's kind of how you shadow it in there. And this is an example of what the head might look like. So these are all very, very basic shapes. And yeah, we are going to apply it to each part of the body. So the head's going to be kind of like a cylinder. You can shade it like that. And the light source is going to be coming from up top. So as you can see, the neck's kind of curved. So the underside is going to be shaded in. And now I'm going to show you how to break the other forms into shapes. So the arms are basically just cylinders. The underside is going to be shaded in, just like that. And the hand is kind of like a cube that's turned, and the underside will be shadowed in. The torso is a big sphere, so we're shadowing in the whole uh, bottom part, and the abdominal muscles kind of look like that. The arm, this is interesting because most of the thing is facing away, so it will have a huge shadow on it. And soon, I will show you guys how to add the shadow on the basic figure. And this figure I actually did so that it looks just like the final figure, but we are adding in shadows, so we kind of know what the final figure is supposed to look like. Here are all the shadows. As you can see, I'm following the forms and adding the cast shadows as I go along. After this, I'm going to use this as reference for my final figure. So this is really helpful to have, especially since you can just kind of reference it and find out about where the shadows are supposed to be. Here I'm using my pencil to kind of shade in where the shadows are supposed to be based on the reference I have from earlier. And this will just kind of give me a rough idea of where my shadows are going to be. So it's really simple. It's following the basic shapes. I'm not defining each muscle just yet. I'll probably do that as I go in with the inks. This is just kind of like a guideline of where to shadow and where I should generally have light. And as I said before, the light is coming from right up top, so it should be fairly simple lighting. Here you can see the chest and torso kind of protrudes out, so everything that goes under will be filled in. Right now, I am actually using a brush pen Usually I would use my pencil to shade it in or a thin micron pen, but I was kind of 
uh, running low on time so I just took a brush pen and filled in the thick blacks. I wouldn't always suggest this especially if you are just starting out because this kind of makes it a little rougher or a little sketchier but it definitely saves you time if you are comfortable with it already. Over here I'm just adding a few more details to the torso. And I'm going in now with the sword. The bottom part of the sword will be shadowed in because it is facing away from the light. So that is a concept you really want to keep in mind. Anything that's facing away from the light is going to be shadowed in. As you can see from the shoulder, I casted a little bit of a shadow because the shoulder is a protruding object. Just like the sphere I explained earlier, casting a shadow onto like a cylinder. Right now, this is the bottom of the cylinder, if you think about it, and you kind of just shadow in the bottom, and then any protruding muscle will have a little bit of core shadow, and then it'll cast a little bit of shadow as well onto the uh, actual arm. In that arm, I went fairly dark. As you can see, he has a red part to his suit, so that part I'm going to leave fairly light. I'm going to do a little bit more cross hatching there instead of filling it in completely with blacks because the rest of his suit is black and I kind of wanted to uh, give it a little bit of contrast and make it look different instead of the same shade. So here I am shading in the legs. I didn't explain the shape earlier, but you can think of the leg as kind of a tube shape or a cylinder. And that's kind of how I shade it. So you can see it's a big cylinder on the top and it's going to cast a shadow onto the little cylinder at the bottom. And since the bottom was going in facing away, I just shadowed that whole thing in. And now we're going in with the face. Most definitely my favorite part to shadow. I'm just shadowing the little parts that protrude out, giving little striations. Because muscles, the way you shade them, it's basically just a lot of different triangular shapes connected together. And you can kind of BS them because not all muscles look the same, but muscles have like a general shape that you can learn and just apply it anywhere you want. I'm just going in and touching it up a little bit. And with shadows, you can cast tiny little shadows because everything that protrudes out will cast a shadow. So I'm just playing around with that. And if something curves, remember the cast shadow has to follow the form of the curve. So if it curves underneath, it gets farther away from the cast shadow. So you'll see kind of more cast shadow on it, if that makes sense. So I'm adding the shadow to the hand and as you can see the bottom of the hand turns away from the light so I shadowed that entire part in. Here I go just adding a few more details. And for the textures of leather you kind of want to make it very dark. You can play around with that, find out what textures to add, and instead of just shadowing them completely in, you can just add a ton of different textures to them. And as you can see, the little belt, all his weapons and stuff, I just kind of cast an extra shadow because they're kind of protruding out, and since they protrude out, they kind of catch the light and then they'll cast a little bit of shadow again. So here I am going with the bottom of the leg. It is fairly dark because it is turning away from all the light. I think I have most of my shadows in already. Now I'm just playing in with the little details. Just adding a little bit more shadow to make it really pop. But I should be able to start cross hatching soon. You can see all the tiny little shadows I'm adding really adds a lot of dimension. You kind of have to look at, uh, what's that called, life to find out what it looks like. So now I'm going in with the cross hatching. I have a lot of videos 
about cross hatching already so make sure you guys check that out i will leave the link in the description down below but cross hatching is fairly easy and fun to do especially with pen and one tip with the pen is usually if you don't want a really stiff line you'll kind of press hard as it goes and kind of lift it up slowly so that it gets a thick to thin line because you want the line to go from thick to thin so that it's not like a sudden transition and it really gives the figure and shape a lot more volume than it would if you would just leave a thin line. I'm going with the arm, cross hatching there. And with the cross hatching, it's similar to the cast shadow. You kind of want to follow the form and stay with it. So if you have a curved form and you end up drawing a straight line for it, it really flattens it out and makes it look flat instead of curved. Again, cross hatching with microns is very similar to cross hatching with a pencil. So you can watch my video on cross hatching using the pencil. Here we go with the leg. Cross hatch, cross hatch, cross hatch. This is honestly one of my favorite parts. I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoy doing this. Wow, look at all those details. Yeah, and I think I talked about most of it already, so if there is any more stuff to say, I will keep saying it, but I'm just gonna enjoy watching myself cross hatch here. Wow, it is actually very unusual for me to watch myself work. Well, obviously I watch myself work every day, but I don't see it sped up and at an angle like the camera. So it's actually pretty cool to watch. Wow, look at that detail. And honestly, um, I don't expect it to come out so detailed until the very end. And sometimes I surprise myself by seeing all the detail because when I don't cross hatch, it really looks flat and I don't know. The te oh, I can't talk. The detail just looks nice to me. Going in with the neck, thin little lines just following all the shapes. And one quick tip, if you guys are trying to cross hatch your figures too, make sure you do a lot of thick to thin, you do lines that are close together and get farther away from each other, or you just do some like thick line and then some completely thin line. Just kind of break up the line as it gets more into the light because this gives you a better transition and it'll make it look a lot less flat. I know when I first started, my drawings looked so flat because all my cross hatching lines were the same. They were just one thickness the whole way through. All the lines were exactly the same distance apart. All the lines were the exact same uh, distance going out and it just made all my figures look like, I don't know, some paper cut out. But now that I learned how to do the, uh, what's that even called, gradients? Yeah, it really makes my drawing stand out more and gives it a lot more dimension from before. And one quick tip, if you want to see your figure kind of shaded in, or if you want to see if your uh, figure follows the reference you have from before, just kind of squint your eyes because whenever you squint your eyes, it removes all the detail from it and you can see the basic shadows and you can see whether it follows the forms. If you can squint your eyes and see the basic forms of the figure, then you are doing a very good job and the lighting is correct. If you squint your eyes and you can't exactly tell which shape is which, then obviously there is something wrong with the shadows and something doesn't match up. Because when you squint, everything turns basic because it removes all the detail and you can see the basic uh, shapes of the figure again. Because all figures, at the end of the day, can be broken down into spheres, rectangular prisms, cones, cylinders, stuff like that.
Now is the fun part, I get to cross hash and render in the little pouches and the, I don't even know what that's called on his leg, it's something. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going in, adding a little bit more detail. Oh, and there I go with the little uh, package near his leg. Yeah, that didn't sound right, but you guys know what I mean. I'm kind of trying to give it a leather texture so that it stands out from the rest of his suit. And I really want to add a little bit more cast shadow to everything just to make sure the things pop out instead of go flat on the page. And now again, it's one of my favorite parts. I'm adding little bullet holes, little nicks and scratches because Deadpool's been through a lot of fighting. He's not perfect. And this really gives him like a more rugged look, makes him look more beat up. Looks like he got through or got into some fights, which makes it a lot more organic in my opinion. Sorry, my head's in the way, but I'm trying to render in his sword, put a little bit of blood on there because you know, what is Deadpool without some blood, right? <laughs> so there we have it. And honestly, there was one drop of blood that was really bothering me, but yeah, that is about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. As I said before, I have a really big announcement. So here it is. There's actually a professional inker that is gonna ink one of my pages and he is gonna do a tutorial for you guys. So I'm featuring him on my channel. You guys will get a lot of tips from him. It should help and it's over my pencils. So it's gonna be really cool working with a professional inker in the industry. And anyways, thank you guys so much for all your support. I am almost at 30,000 subscribers. Once we hit 30,000, I'm doing another giveaway. This video shout out goes to Luke this RV. If you want to win a shout out to, all you have to do is join the notification squad by clicking subscribe, hitting that bell to turn on post notifications, and letting me know down in the comments when you're done. Because all the cool kids are part of the notification squad already, so you might as well join it too. Tomorrow I'm going to show you guys step by step how I drew this Deadpool, including colors. Step by step from start to finish, you guys will really like it. I hope you guys are excited for it, and I will see you guys in that video. Keep those pencils moving, you guys. I'll see you guys next time.